Today, we're exploring AI for bias detection. One of our monikers and our editorial standards is representing the opinion and the other opinion. And how do we measure that? How do we ensure that we are actually uh, remaining true to that? And being, you know, with the amount of content that's being produced, how do we uh, utilize some of these um, uh, technologies to be able to support uh, that activity? The thing about impartiality is you can talk about it a lot and you can say that you have it and you can say that in all these hours of coverage that Grant mentions, you know, we're the same, it's a relentless news cycle. You're doing this stuff. But imagine if there were tools that could help you demonstrate how you were doing it. The starting point for this accelerator really was the recognition that the language of reporting the news is a powerful means of conveying more than the bold facts. And broadcasters are rightly held accountable for these editorial choices. Reuters as a global news agency is built on trust principles of unbiased reporting. And that means we need to ensure that everything that goes out is factual and there's no uh, no ability to misinterpret. If you take AP, we probably produce in the region of 20,000 hours of live coverage per year. That's 24 million shots that each have to be accurately described, that words will go over the top of those pictures. That's a huge undertaking that today is done, is done by humans. And this is where we need the help. We need the machine to help, not to take over, but to help, and I think that's, in many ways, the genesis of this project. You know, 95% of the data that is in media is unstructured. It's either video, audio, or text. Um, and so, really, we were really interested in this project to try to see if we could come up with the outline of a machine language to evaluate uh, the semantics of, of news coverage. The harder things were really related to uh, computer vision, right? So object detection, uh, action detection, notoriously very difficult. Um, voice classification, you know, which is a, uh, uh, which is a signal processing problem. Uh, we found a lot of fairly low hanging fruit things that we could do to really uh, help news organizations, you know, be aware of their content. I think the, the goal really is, is content awareness before bias detection, because again, you have this mass as Sandy said, this mass of unstructured data and making it structured has a lot of value. This can be a tool that can facilitate self-reflection and correction in our own news output. And as Eve said, can uh, allow for the possibility of comparison with the output of, of our peers. It's not been the AI is the solution, what was the question again? It's been, right, we can step back and do this simply and not with a lot of expensive machine learning, you know, with, uh, as Eve's uh, spoken about earlier, just looking at word counts, looking at the type of language used. We can make it overly complicated by going into uh, trying to do uh, complete uh, human gesture analysis, yeah. but uh, it doesn't need to be. The industry has a responsibility yeah. to solve this. This isn't about somebody from Silicon Valley coming along and solving it for us. We need to solve this for ourselves, but, but and, and the internal cell is exactly as Laura says, this is the friend, not the foe, of the journalist and the friend, not the foe, of our future.